What's up guys? Welcome back to Investing PH. Today we are going to evaluate GT Capital Holdings or GT Cap. This is one of the largest conglomerates here in our country. Its price since the start of the pandemic hasn't moved that much. Let's try to see if it's really undervalued or not. So let's start. Once again, this video is for educational purposes only and merely cite my own opinion. It should not be used as basis for your investing decision. Please still do your own analysis of the company. Before we begin, would really appreciate it if you would kindly click the like button. And if you still aren't subscribed yet, might as well click that button as well. Now, who is GT Capital Holdings? GT Cap traces its root back when Metro Bank was established on September 5, 1962 by group chairman Dr. George T. And in 2007, GT Capital was incorporated to become the primary vehicle for the holding and management of the diversified businesses. GT Capital is a conglomerate with interest in market-leading businesses across banking, property development, infrastructure, and utilities, automotive assembly, importation, wholesaling, dealership, and financing, and life and non-life insurance. The company is owned by Grand Titan, which has 56.2% share, and for the public float, 44.07%. They have five main holdings. First is Metro Bank, at which they have 37.15% ownership. Now, Metro Bank's pre-provision operating profit grew by about 26% in 2020. But if you look at their net income, it had decreased from $28.1 billion in 2019 to $13.8 billion in 2020. This happened due to Metro Bank's increasing its provision to $40.8 billion in 2020 from $10.1 billion at the previous year. This is to adequately prepare for the risk related to the pandemic. So this is the money that the bank set aside to allow for uncollected loans and loan payments, at which in the pandemic, a lot may not be able to pay to them. Now this is seen as a negative number in the income statement. So although their profits were higher based pre-provision, since they had to set aside larger amount, their net income decreased quite a bit. Imagine, four times bigger provision compared to 2019. Next holding is Toyota Motor Philippines, at which they have 51% ownership. Now, Toyota market share had an all-time high of 41.3% in 2020. Although retail vehicle sales plummeted down this pandemic, they still maintained their dominance in the market share in the automotive industry. Still, their net income wasn't spared, decreasing from $9.1 billion to $3.3 billion. Now, this is the different market share for the automotive industry in 2020. We can see Toyota is still far from its competitors, almost half the market share here in the Philippines. Next is federal land at which they have full ownership. And like all real estate companies, this was surely not spared by the pandemic as well. From $1.6 billion net income in 2019 down to $0.6 billion this 2020. Although on the brighter side, their assets still increase during this time. Next holding is their life and general insurance, at which they have 25.3% ownership. For this one, even amidst the pandemic, they had 22% net income growth, and total assets are in a steady increase since 2018 as well. Lastly, their holding in Metro Pacific Investment Corporation or MPI, at which they have 15.98% ownership. This diversifies their business further since MPI holds as well different companies which are large companies. Now, MPI has a toll road business. This pandemic, since there are a lot of lockdown that has happened, we can see the average daily vehicle entries drastically dropped. Power sales was also cut down since buildings weren't used because of the work at home policy. With this, MPI's net income had decreased dramatically from $23.9 billion to $4.7 billion in 2020. Now, I have a video analysis of MPI. So if you want to watch the full analysis of this company, there's a link below. With that, let's go to their financials. We would still be following our checklist to evaluate this company. Since, of course, this checklist is just a quick view of the company and this one focuses more on the financial side of the company. If you notice, in every stock analysis I do, we always start with the company background. That way, you get to familiarize yourself with the company. Checklist often starts there. Like, do you like the business so far? Do you see their business growing in the years to come? Do you understand their business so far? Those kinds of things are also add-ons to your checklist when evaluating the company for yourself. Anyway, let's move on. Let's first look at their income statement. What I want to see here is for revenue and net income to be growing at a steady rate. Now, of course, there's just a slight exceptional year, which is the pandemic, where most companies like this one was really not spared, no matter how strong they are. Anyway, let's first look at the revenue. If you notice, starting 2013, 
they had massive increase. Now, this is started by the acquisition of the holding company of Toyota Motors from Metrobank Group. Then a series of acquisition happened from 2013 up to 2016 from their AXA holdings and their MPI holding. Now, if you notice in 2018, they had a slight decrease in revenue. If you look at their 2018 annual report, almost all of their holdings had an increase except their automotive sales. During this time, Toyota still had the highest market share of automotive sales. It's just that the overall annual vehicle sales in the Philippines declined, which was the first time since 2011 at which all automotive companies had a decline in sales. This was due to the higher automobile taxes. So this is the only problem with holding companies. Some of their businesses can pull down their growth, although for this one, all of their competitor as well had a decrease in the automotive section. Regarding that, they still did fairly good maintaining top market share. Moving to their net income, almost same story, but had a higher growth of recovery in 2019. Now, when I value companies this pandemic, I don't usually look at much their 2020 growth since the pandemic is really an exceptional case for companies. Anyway, the growth in 2019 net income greatly shrugs off the negative growth in 2018. In their net income margin, they maintain it at 6 to 9 percent. Now, 2010 to 2013 was only that high since their acquisition of their businesses started in 2013. So for this one, it's still a check for me since everything that has happened from the tax imposition in the automotive section, they still recovered in 2019. But again, the pandemic happened at which all of their business was greatly affected. Moving on to their balance sheet. So even with the pandemic, they still increased their equity. As for the latest 12 month, they already had a positive growth. With that, for their 10-year compounded average, they have grown at 19.70%. And if we only account their growth starting in 2013, they still had 11% compounded growth. Another check. Moving on to their ROE. ROE tells us how efficient the company is in using their equity to produce net profits. The higher the ROE, the better. Now, since it's really hard to compare holding companies to other holding companies since their businesses are different, so comparing them wouldn't much give us any clue at all. For this one, I just look for at least above 10% ROE for large holding companies. So for GTCAP, their 5-year ROE average is sitting at 7.7%. So not quite what I want, so an X for me. Now let's check if they don't rely on too much debt for their ROE. This is the debt to equity ratio. With this, they have a debt to equity ratio of 0 0.95. Following our criteria, they are well in line to what I want. The lower the number here, the less risk we are taking. So a check for me. For their cash flow statement, we can see it's kinda all around the place. Their cash from operating activities is negative from 2018 up to 2020. Although for their latest 12 months, they have recovered quite a bit, having a positive cash flow. Still, what I want here is to have consistency in both cash from operations and free cash flow. Next, let's see if they can pay up their long-term debt using their free cash on hand in just under 3 years. So their FCF to long-term debt ratio is at 8.59 for their latest 12 month. So beyond what I want, another X in my list. Moving on, let's see if they're handling their short-term obligations well or their short-term debts. This is the current ratio. With this, they have a current ratio of 2 in their latest 12 months. This means they have 2 pesos of current assets for every 1 peso of current liabilities. What I want here is for this to be at least above 1. So this one, a check for me. Now for the company's PE ratio, they have a price to earnings ratio of 11.96. This means you are willing to pay 11.96 peso to earn 1 peso. Now it's still actually slightly higher even though their price really dropped down. This is because their earnings this pandemic was really cut down hard. If you use their EPS pre-pandemic, their price to earnings ratio would only be 7.34. So something to take note on. Anyway, this is still a check for me since it's still below 15. Now for the company's dividends, yearly they pay out dividends, just not that much. For their current price, their cash dividend yield in 2020 was at 1.06%. Now for the company's moat, what makes this company sturdy against its competitors? For their automotive business, Toyota is the leading brand in market share in our country, gaining 41% share which is a big difference compared to its competitors. Even with the sale of vehicles in 2018 dropping, they still maintain their lead in market share and they have been in the lead for a long time. Gaining loyalty for their customers, it's like a phone. People often stick to one brand at which we can say their Toyota business has a switching moat. And for their bank holding, MBT is one of the largest bank in the Philippines and the only bank here that offers an ETF index fund for us investors. And for MPI, I discuss in my stock analysis of it why MPI has one of the strongest moat in their different holdings. 
for their insurance business, AXA is one of the leading insurance company as well in our country. So in almost all of their holdings, they have a strong competitive advantage in them. This is really a big check for their moat. Now for the company's leader, their chairman is Arthur V. T. He is the son of the late Dr. George T. He had been in the vice chairman position since the company's inception in 2007 and was also president of Metro Bank from 2006 to 2012. With that alone, his exposure to the company is a long time and his family is the founder itself. He also holds countless of shares in the company along with his brother Alfred T, who is the vice chairman of the company. And the advantage of its founders being the leader is they know well the company and how it works. And both of them had been in the company for a long time. And seeing how the company has grown ever since, this is a check as well. Lastly, is it within my buy below price? My computed intrinsic value for them is 854, having a 30% margin of safety. My buy below price is at 597. The company's current price in the creation of this video is at 550. So another check. With that, the company only failed in my ROE. FCF and long-term debt assessment. I removed the overall score since it doesn't much say anything actually. Since whenever I look at my checklist, when I see an X mark in it, I always think of it this way. How does this affect my risk in the company? Are the checks in my list outweighs those X marks? These are the things that comes into my mind whenever I want to invest in the company. If I can't decide, then I would research and study my checklist further. Because when I invest in a company, I want to be comfortable with it. I want to just leave it after I bought it. So you have to look at your checklist as a whole that in every line works hand in hand to each other. So never underestimate having a checklist because it really makes things easier in assessing a company. Anyway, these videos are just a quick summary of the company. So if you're liking the company so far, then do further research into it. With that said, I hope you liked the video and if you do and still haven't clicked that like button, then I would really appreciate it if you do so. Thank you and see you in the next video.